Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Jay, and like always, I got something to say. What I got to say is this. We're going to start off with a prayer and a scripture. And um, the scripture we're coming out of is Romans 14 and 13. It says, therefore, let us not let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling blocks or obstacles in the way of your brothers or your sisters. Stop judging people. We don't have any room to judge nobody because we got issues ourselves. So when you stop judging people, you you actually bless yourself. Bless yourself with some grace. Bless yourself to show that you actually follow the teachings of God. And that you actually love somebody enough not to sit there and judge them, but to try to help them. Amen. Amen. Dear Father God, we just thank you, God. God, let us be able to increase. God, bless every listener under the sound of my voice. God, bless them. Touch them. Touch them financially. Touch them mentally. Touch them with their health, God. If anybody is down with any health issues or even COVID, God, just heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we ask you to come forth right now and to be able to uh, have something be said tonight, to be able to bring new revelation, confirmation, and to be able to bring growth in somebody's life that is listening to us tonight. God, enlarge our territory tonight, God. Enlarge our listenership, enlarge our, our, our range of the people that we reach, God. God, we ask you to be able to let us be able to touch the untouchable teach the unteachable and even be able to reach the people with the, even the hardest hearts so that they can even say, what can I do to be saved? So God, we, we thank you, God, God, we ask you to bless all the listeners listening now or even on the podcast, encourage them to know you more, to chase after you, to hear your voice in those times of need. God, we just thank you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And we say that all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jay. And like always, I got something to say. And what I got to say is this. You can find me at Anointed Jaylon on all social media platforms, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, all those good places. Definitely go check check me out on all social media platforms and follow me there and you can check out all of my music um from jesus you make me happy wake up bless renew my praise um and plenty of more go to pastor jaylon calhoun on apple spotify vivo and check me out definitely listen to it put it on your playlist put make sure that you have you know a pastor jay song because it's gonna uplift you I tell you that right now. And if you haven't, make sure you share, like, subscribe. Um, all my YouTube people, comment, like, subscribe. All of my Facebook people that is watching this, make sure you share, um, add somebody. Um, unfortunately, um, our guests, due to weather in the East Coast, was not able to join us. But praise God, the show will continue to go on. We're going to talk about a good topic about judgment today. Um, I believe it's going to be uplifted where you can actually join in and you could um, message us and comment and, and, and do all those good things out there on the social media world where you could be able to join in on the conversation today about judgment. I, we've been seeing a lot of things in the world recently, and I believe that we should talk about judgment to kind of get a better, clear, clearer image of how we should be as christians amen amen and for all of the people that is missing we have ben jamming established in 93 he's out um everybody lift up a prayer for his wife miss valerie um where she um had a procedure and he is taking care of her so um everybody make sure that you guys pray for the johnson family um another thing is to make sure that you um Follow Ben underscore jamming underscore established 93. Another person to follow is everybody's favorite auntie, Dr. Marvinetta Clay, where you could be able to follow all her music at Dr. Marvinetta Clay. Go to drmarvinettaclay.com or check out her product line at Worship Forever One. And then check out Chiquita Andrews, where um, 
Chiquita Andrews, where you could um, find her book, Trying to Be Broken But Unbroken on all Barnes and Nobles and all that good stuff. And Chris Johnson, that's in Chris J. We got a lot of this. We're going to stop this. We got a lot of people out. But we got somebody that's here, and we got our favorite sportscaster. You know it. Boss Barbie coming all the way from 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 I think Las Vegas to Detroit to all over. <laughs> Boss Barbie, where can everybody find you? Hey, what's up, everybody? You know, you can find me at Boss Two Underscores Barbie on Instagram and Twitter. And also, if you're not already, follow my business page on Instagram and Facebook at Check Dot Rock. Um, it's a lot of things going on out here in the world, and Check Rock is definitely all on it. Um, once we finish all these introductions and stuff, I'll go into a little more detail. Amen. With that, we got some people in the comments. We have uh, Martel Stewart, where it says, "Pray for his friend uh, Rajane Beck and her family cousin." With um, and her family a cousin oh, well, that's my cousin martel hey 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 uh definitely pray for her we got miss riley jones saying yay hey what's up riley <laughs> so um with that being said it's all the bar boss barbie show right now where we're gonna go ahead and turn in into her sports segment and with that being said go ahead boss barbie all right, so before I get to the sports, like I said, Check Rock is doing some work in the streets. And right now we are working to bring justice to um, Joshua Johnson in Norman, Oklahoma. If you have not seen the video, um, it has went viral, but um, he is a young boy um, within the spectrum and he was bullied by one of his classmates and assaulted by one of his classmates. Um, I have been speaking very closely to his mom, Adrian, um, for the past couple of days since I became aware of this video, and I am doing everything that I can to make sure that her son gets the proper justice and protection that he needs. Along with uh, Joshua, though, there are other victims of the same crime, and I pray for everybody um, that's involved. I pray for the victims um, because, you know, these kids should just be able to go to school and, you know, learn and be able to return home without, you know, any ill and uh, any ill thoughts about, you know, suicide or anything just because of the problems that they're dealing with at school. Um, so, you know, Check Rock, we do not tolerate bullies. We bring mental health awareness and prevention to suicide. And all those three things right now is a huge factor right now for everybody involved out there in Norman, Oklahoma, because the, the same kid that's been bullying everybody not, the school's not doing anything. Nobody's out there really trying to help anybody. So Check Rock is stepping in. I've already contacted the Congress and submitted a bill to make bullying a punishable act. We are doing everything we can. I've reached out to some more bully advocates um, in the know with Brittany Dorsey and Heart of Gold here in Las Vegas. Um, we are all just working to, you know, make sure we let Joshua and other kids know that we are here for them and we will fight for them. So um, if you want more details about that, you know, you can follow me um, on social media and make sure you follow the business page as well at Check That Rock on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, so and I will say, make sure that you share justice for Joshua. If you uh, if you know it, definitely. Um, if you know any lawyers, if you know any support groups in Oklahoma, we are all we got. We are the community. So we have to definitely be that support system. Definitely hit up boss underscore underscore B -B -A -R -B -E -E, um, B-A-R-B-E-E on all social media platforms. If you have those resources, um, because our kids are the future and we got to protect them any way that we can. So make sure that if you can tag somebody, add somebody share it so that we could be able to help out Joshua out there in Oklahoma and his mom um, in this situation because bullying leads to suicide. We just had a whole show about suicide it is a horrible thing to go through when dealing with somebody that's done suicide or thinking about suicide. And a lot of times people internalizes it and um, 
they don't really get to the point where they get the help or they get the support that they need. So let's make sure that we can intervene this time and get some support for Joshua and his mom in Oklahoma. Yes. Amen. yes. Um, and like Pastor Jay said, we all we got. And I've posted about this issue like a couple days ago since I found out about it. And I have not gotten any traction on my social media. I am calling out everybody that follows me and looks at my page or anything. Do not comment on anything else I post unless you have commented and shared the post about Joshua and the abuse that he's dealing with in school. Because that is the main and only important thing that is on my mind and that should be on yours. Because if it's not her kid, it could be yours. If it's not my kid, it could be Pastor Jay's. It could be anybody's kids out here. And we just want to make sure we keep providing a safe place and, um, you know, a place, a resource for these kids to actually come to. So that way, you know, some things can actually happen to these kids that are bullying people. Um, so on to some sports, you know, to lighten the mood up a little bit. I'm going to talk about the Raiders. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so everybody knows what happened in the game. The Raiders lost to the Bengals 19 to 26. It was the wild card game. It was the playoffs. Things were looking good. You know, the Raiders made it to the red zone three, four times and only ended up with field goals. And that ended up being the story of the game. But they had a chance to still tie the game and go into overtime. And Derek Carr, tunnel vision, man. He was only looking at one person during that whole last play. And, you know, he missed a wide open Zay Jones over there, man. It's, it's sad because everybody didn't got fired since this game. The GM, the coach, no, he out. out he, he was just an intern. Derek Carr, he don't know if his job is still there. It's, it's a lot going on in, within the Raiders organization. And Mark Davis got a lot of work to do and a lot of big decisions to make to right this ship because it's been about 10 years. 10 years since the Raiders have been, you know, relevant. And, you know, they didn't spend a lot of money on this new stadium out here in Vegas and everything. And the only thing that they're still not producing is the wins and the playoff victories. So pray for the Raiders. You know, they did have a really tough season. They went through a lot um, and still prevailed and made it to the playoffs. So, you know, I do hand out some type of congratulations but, you know, they, they need to come better next year for sure. They, they know they got to come harder and better next year because nobody's making excuses for them after, after this year, you know, because they've already showed that they can still win even when they're dealing with stuff. Pass I'm going to just jump into that one, though. <laughs> um, shout outs to the Raiders. We did a good job of what we got. And even with losing – uh, players losing a uh, head coach reforming we still had five walk-off games and won three of them in overtime so congratulations you did it you got farther than what most people expected yes. so yes. with that being said shout outs to y'all we just didn't make it to the to the bowl but we still got time to grow go back we got time to grow before the super bowl get here we got exactly. time. So, got hey, time that's, I, I'm going to stay loyal because I've watched my dad be like Pastor Jay, you know, and stay loyal through all the disappointments. So I've always still talked my junk, though. So I'm going to still talk my trash, but I'm still going to be loyal. So that's what that's just what comes with it. I, hey, take it or leave, you know. But, you know, prayers up to y'all and I, good luck next season. Good luck next season. Um, moving on to the Golden Knights, they're kind of on a losing streak. Um, they're on a three-game losing streak. Um, I actually had a chance to catch them in action against the Maple Leafs, and that game was so exciting. They went into a shootout, and if you know anything about hockey, that's the best part of the hockey game uh, If when they go into overtime and have that shootout. Um, they ended up losing 4-3, to three, um, and uh, then they took on the Penguins this past Monday, and the Penguins is one of the hottest teams in the league. Um, so, yeah, um, they ended up losing that game 5-3. to three. So um, they have until tomorrow, 
and they play the Canadians. And y'all know dating back into the playoffs last year, they was going at it with the Canadians and, you know, ultimately got sent home by them. So I look for them to, you know, try to get a statement win here at home and, you know, send a message uh, to the rest of the league that just because they've had a couple losses here and there, they still going to bounce back. And also they do have a couple all-stars um, that made it to the all-star game, which is going to be here in Las Vegas. So, you know, congratulations to Preciati. I, I can never say his name right, but that is the one and only player that I definitely learned the first time I watched the, the Vegas Knights play last year. And yeah, he deserves the all-star spot for sure. So um, congratulations. And uh, yeah, yeah, good luck to the Knights tomorrow. Um, we'll be watching. Uh, the Aces, um, you know, if you haven't know, uh, heard, they've made a lot of moves. Uh, free agency in the WNBA has started. Um, so players like Liz Cambage have came up, um, even Kelsey Plum, uh, Raquana Williams, all those girls. Uh, there's a lot of talk about some new players maybe coming in, like Stephanie Dolson and everything like that. So uh, WNBA news has been, you know, taking over the Twitterverse. We, um, we were actually uh, number one trending the other day, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, you know, I look forward to seeing what Becky Hammond does with this new team and um, all the new things that they, you know, add and, you know, so that way they can make themselves win the championship. Um, uh, Kelsey Plum is overseas in the Euro League with a couple other players that's also in the Euro League. Uh, she had a game today and she dropped 19 oh she dropped 12 points nine rebounds and six assists it seems like a typical Kelsey Plum game to me you know almost a triple double you know making sure she's doing all the things that her team needs to do to win and yeah they went on to win that game 80 to 68 so um she's doing her thing shout out to her and the rest of the aces I see y'all out here you know just enjoying the off season and you know enjoying being in the highlights right now because Y'all got one of the hottest coaches coming in coaching y'all. So um, it's going to be great. It's going to be a great season. I can't wait to, you know, get with these ladies. Um, moving on to the UNLV women's basketball team, who is on a three-game win streak, looking like it's going to be a four-game win streak because they're playing right now against San Jose State. They're winning 51-41 to at the end of the third. So, yeah, I think they might wrap that up. Um, they've actually been winning the past couple of their games by at least 20. Um, so shout out to them. Shout out to Essence. Shout out to Justice. Uh, uh, all of them girls, man, they out there balling, man. They, they really holding it down. And, uh, you know, they, they just trying to compete with the men's team, who is also, you know, having a pretty good season themselves. They, uh, before they lost last week to San Diego State at home, they were on the three-game win streak, too. And they ended up righting the ship um, and winning against uh, San Jose themselves on Monday, um, 81-56. to 56. They play tomorrow against Air Force at 6 o'clock. So make sure you check your local listings and, you know, tune into the game. I drive past the UNLV stadium all the time, y'all. Y'all got to get to the games, man. I'm watching on TV. I'm seeing them stands are still empty. Y'all got to get out there, support our teams. If we don't support them, who will? Who will? And, uh, you know, last but not least, shout out to Athletes Unlimited. Um, they season is about to start next week, and they've released the um, 44 roster. And it's a couple key names on there that I know. Shout out to Ball Barbie, um, but her name is Chelsea. <laughs> but, you know, on Instagram and everything, her name is Ball Barbie. Uh, so ch shout out to Chelsea Phillips. Shout out to Mimi Jackson. You know, Dominique Wilson. Like, it, they got some crazy names in there, man. Odyssey Sims is in there. Ty Young is back. Sydney Colson's in there. Like, that. that's going to be a very exciting and um, – I, I'm I'm looking very forward to um, reporting and going to their games, man. It's it's gonna be great for women's basketball, women's sports. Um, you know, athletes unlimited also has softball and volleyball professional sports. So hey, they they doing great things for women's sports. So make sure y'all support, man. Amen. And with that, make sure you go and follow Boss Barbie with all of of her updates. 
She has all the updates on Twitter, um, boss underscore underscore Barbie, B-A-R-B-E-E. Make sure you go follow her on all social media platforms, and she'll keep you updated. Shout out to all of our partners, the Las Vegas Raiders, Las Vegas Aces, Las Vegas Lights, Las Vegas um, Golden Knights, and the soon-to-be Las Vegas um, A's um, Athletics. And shout outs to the Raiders. It was a tough it was a tough one, but come home and regroup. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and go into the mix. And we're going to play some, some new little tracks out there that I've been hearing. Um, and we'll be back and we're going to be talking about some judgment. You know, just light conversation where you could be part of it too. So while we are in music break, make sure you sit back, enjoy, share, like, subscribe, download the Anointed Radio app. And um, yeah, check us out. And we're going to see y'all in a minute bye y'all yeah wait a second let me brag on my god hear the truth yeah he's showing off yeah i promise he never took a loss if i'ma tell it i gotta tell it all wait a second let me brag on my god hear the truth i ain't just telling y'all you can count it he never took a loss and if i'ma tell it i gotta tell it all Hold on, wait a second, let me brag on my I love my God to keep them bands on me You may say I'm tripping, I'm your fan only I love the time that we be spending low-key And I know they rock it with me when his hands on me Oh, this is all I know I know you riding with me when the time's getting low So I be on a mission till your plan I go And I can tell you vibe with me Oh, you tell me from every weapon And every lesson has a blessing There's a reason why I'm rapping Hold on, wait a, wait a second, wait a second, let me brag on my God. Hear the truth, yeah, he's showing off. Yeah, I promise he never took a loss. If I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. Hear the truth, I ain't just telling y'all. You can count it, he never took a loss. And if I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Hold on, wait a second, let me brag on my Every time I think about your love, love, love Finally got somebody I can trust, trust, trust Why you keeping me, I really just don't know As you can see, we got it going up, oh, oh, Yeah, because of you And when I got you beside me, I can't lose And all that hating, they talking, it ain't true And I'ma tell the world, cause they got enough You tear me from every weapon And every lesson, there's a blessing And there's a reason why I'm rapping Hold on, wait a, wait a second, wait a second, let me brag on my God Hear the truth, yeah, he's showing off. showing off Yeah, I promise he never took a loss If I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all Wait a second, let me brag on my God Hear the truth, I ain't just telling y'all You can count it, he never took a loss And if I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all Hold on, wait a second, let me brag on my Brag on my Brag on my Wait a second, let me brag on my God. Hear the truth, yeah, he's showing off. Yeah, I promise he never took a loss. If I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Wait a second, let me brag on my God. Hear the truth, I ain't just telling y'all. You can count it, he never took a loss. And if I'ma tell it, I gotta tell it all. Hold on, wait a second, let me brag on my. I made a deal with fear, you keep me warm, I stay here Been addicted to comfort, and it's not even real I know complacency, it is a silent kill And all transparency, I love the way that it feels, man Give me a box and I'll stay in Deal me the cards and I play with them Lord, deliver me from my apathy Tired of living for myself, you know it's killing me, yeah Help me, Lord, I need to wake up Even 
waiting on me, waiting complaining on me. that I am blind but never wanted to see. Wanted I to give see. you so many words, they be as fast as the sea, but they return to me void because I don't move my feet. Lord, I need reiteration, I made it complicated, when it's so simple, I need an alteration, Lord, deliver me, Yeah. help me, Lord, I need to wake up again, put that fire under my feet, fell asleep and need a shake, oh my, yeah, cause I've been settling, waste of time, I gotta make up. Take it one step at a time, at a time. But first, I gotta wake up. Yeah. Rise and shine, give me that high five, high five. Now, with you, it's gonna be all right, all right. We can take it one step at a time, at a time. But first, I gotta wake up, wake up. Mm. Help me, Lord, I need to wake up. Oh, yeah. Put that fire Smoking weed, Jesus. They like how you got up by that trap, Jesus. They like how you stop having sex, Jesus. If you want a whole new life, call Jesus. I'ma keep speaking about my God, ain't no stopping. Jesus Christ, the only way to heaven, ain't no options. Time is running out with that clock tick tocking. Life is more than money, boy, stop living for your pockets. Get up in your wallet. If you don't got a Bible, go and cop it. I don't want you out here getting fooled. Jesus really God, man, he's more than just a prophet. They be out of pocket. If it don't line up with his word, it's demonic. If you seek the truth, I promise you gon' find it. If you seek the truth, I promise you gon' find it. Yeah, I promise you gon' find it. I, I, I be in the streets, I'm trying to tell him what he did. I ain't gon' stop, I'm trying to tell all my friends. That cross on my chest when I'm rocking MTN. Nothing been the same since I've been born again. I be in the streets, I'm trying to tell him what he did. I ain't gon' stop, I'm trying to tell all my friends. That cross on my chest when I'm rocking MTN. Nothing been the same since I've been born again. Hey, you can have a hundred bands, you can have a milli. Nothing gon' change, but you still gon' be empty. I'm preaching more than money, cause I know that's why he sent me. I'm preaching more than money cause I know that's why he sent me I know that he's alive and he's real, that's a Fendi I gave my life to God, I got blessings, I got plenty Just call on Jesus Christ when you feel like you ready, ayy Just call on Jesus Christ when you ready Who the one that's setting people free? Jesus Who the one that's still saving souls? Jesus Who the one that gave me a new heart? Who the one that took me out the dark? Jesus. Who the one that's setting people free? Jesus. Who the one that's still saving souls? Jesus. Who the one that gave me a new heart? Who the one that took me out the dark? Jesus. They like how you stop smoking weed? Jesus. They like how you got up by that trap? Jesus. They like how you stop having sex? Jesus. If you want a whole new life, call Jesus. 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 
Jesus. If you want a whole new life, call Jesus. Jesus really got me. He's more than just a prophet. Amen. We are back in effect, and we're back on here on the stage, and we're talking about about judgment. This is the interesting part where you can come in to the room and be able to, I guess you could say interact with us, but we're going to be talking about a few things. I'm going to just kind of start off with one thing that, that really sticking with me in this time and age. Um, we have social media, but we're not social. What do I mean by that? We have social media, but we're not social. We do not interact with each other. We just watch. We don't help. We don't uplift. We run to negativity, and it seems to be a cancer in the community. And that's what this judgment conversation is going to talk about because we're so quick to judge somebody, but we're so slow to congratulate somebody. Hey, Rebecca Boyd, I see you in the comments. I want you to really think about it. Everybody has flaws in the Christian community. Sometimes I'm going to be honest, saying it on the air. It's embarrassing to be in it because they want people to, it's kind of like a person that won't to have company at their house, but they don't like company at their house. That's how it seems to be. Like you want people around you, but you don't like being around people because of habits, but you have habits too. You have issues too. And, and, and we can't sit here and judge somebody because we all have flaws when it comes to judgment. This is something that I, I really feel that is pushing away the younger generation from the now day church is that in the church, we're quick to judge somebody for what they're doing, but we have, we're so slow to help them because if we help them, we feel like we're going to be assigned to them. We're going to be obligated, but that's part of the journey. Somebody was assigned to you. Somebody was there to help you out of those situations. And I really feel like in this day and time, we do not help people. We're it's in, in this social media D I guess you could say desensitize, whatever the word would be for that. We see people struggling, but we won't help. We pass by people and we don't lend a helping hand, but we're so quick to, to show someone's flaws. Why? Honestly, why? I'm, I'm, I'm going to open that up in there. Why are we so quick to run to drama? Why are we so quick to get to a point of talking about somebody else and gossiping about somebody else, but we're not quick to talk about how we could help that person, how we could uplift that person, how we could really, you know, be that, that person's light in that situation, because there's people out here hurting. You know, we're talking about Joshua. It's sad that a, a, a young boy in school is getting bullied, but no one's coming out to help. Boss Barbie's been talking about it. She brought it out to me. I've been researching and trying to find help, but that's our society now. But we want people to come to church. How are they going to come to church if you're not going to like what they come with? People come with baggage. That's like saying in a relationship, oh, I want to be in a relationship, but I don't want to deal with you. How, Sway? Judgment doesn't look good on you. It doesn't look good on anybody because when you point a finger at somebody, you got three pointing right back at you. Just because somebody's issues you could see doesn't mean they can't see the issues that nobody sees. Hello, somebody. Boss Barb, what do you think about that? Um, I just think it all comes down to um, people's own what, what what they're lacking inside of themselves um because um it's like if they went through something and nobody helped them and they had to figure it out or they're still dealing with the trauma then they expect people to deal with their trauma in the exact same way and um i i if you you talk about the situation with joshua you know there's there's been multiple posts about you know, his situation and 
other children who, you know, who have completed suicide and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it gets the buzz for like a couple days and then it just dies. It just goes away. Nobody talks about it anymore. Nobody really cares about it anymore. But, you know, if somebody gets, if a black kid gets shot by a cop, oh, that's going to stay on the internet. Like, you know, like, it's going to stay there. It's going to keep playing through a loop. But if a, a, a black person kills another black person, oh, we're not saying nothing on that either. Like, we don't have no type of accountability we don't want to try to understand we don't want to try to do anything to you know fix a situation we just want to keep feeding into it and doing what the rest of these people do and if it don't bring money if it don't bring likes then hey they they don't really care about it and that's sad that's what social media has come to i could post a sandwich and get four thousand plus views but you know, if I post something that's really a social matter in our world, I get nothing. I get nothing. Right. Nothing. And that's sad. That's very sad. And I'm very disappointed. Like it 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 makes me upset because of the the little things we give our attention to, that's a waste of time. That's a waste mm. of time. All that we could literally be using this platform. We all have a platform and we're not even using it effectively at all. First thing I have to say is we have AJ in the comments saying appreciate you all. Shout outs to you, AJ. Oh, yeah, that's uh that's Joshua's mom. Yeah, hey, it man. is. Um, we have Martel saying, let's not talk about it, let's just do it and not yep. wait for others to search every platform and talk about it. Um, and bingo, the new Periscope TikTok is save many lot uh live many live uh platforms to push the message. But one thing I could say about that too going into the, the situation i see trina said that she contacted naacp and a lawyer and waiting for to hear back one thing i want to just say is and i'm i'm, I'm going to to stand for the church we have to be the pillar of the community again the the church used to be the pillar of the community you know it wasn't just you know when the cameras were out we did something you know when the they when you had something on your heart. If God blessed you with something, you was like, you know what? I'm going to do this from the bottom of my heart, not for likes, not subscribes. And it's, it's crazy because even when you're, let's talk about this social media platform. First of all, if you think about it, it's the modern day stalker where we we're on it. Yes. Cause we use it as a platform, but when you look at it, what are you doing for it? Are you speaking a positive message to uplift others? Are you trying to put out something globally so that people can know about uh, awareness that if there wasn't social media that no one would know about, are you doing something positive or are you just sitting there wasting, like you said, our time and a lot of times we flock to negativity but we do not flock to help somebody. We do not flock to uplift somebody. It's, it's, it's a rat race. A lot of times you see people trying to compete or recreate instead of support. Um, there's a lot of times where you get to a point in your life where you just get tired. You know, there's a lot of people that deactivate social media because it feels like, you know, you have all these people there, but when it comes down to something really seriously, nothing is really supported. I'm, I'm going to be transparent. I'll be transparent. Anointed Radio has been in circulation for five years now. And I was so disappointed on how so many people did not support. They'd rather judge or who is this person or who is that person? Who cares? I'm doing something positive. I could be in these streets. Support somebody instead of judging or trying to find something bad about them. Help them. You don't know what you can do to help somebody get to the next level. And it doesn't cost money to support. It doesn't cost, it, it could be information. It could just be a share. It doesn't cost anything to be kind. I've said this before and I wanted to just say it again. And I, I really want to know in this, I, I would say, you know, boss Barbie, I'll give you this question with this nowadays age, where do you see the church heading? Mm. Um, well, uh, seeing that mega churches have kind of popped up and, you know, took the world by storm and, you know, made a lot of money and everything like that. And, 
you know, it's not more, it's not much about the message that they're putting out, but more so how much money they're bringing in. Um, I just see the church kind of going away a little bit um, just because it's too many money hungry people in it and not enough people that's actually trying to save souls and, you know, change people's lives and, you know, put out a word that people actually need to hear. Um, I can honestly say every time I get on this show, Pastor Jay, you say a word or you say something that literally pertains to what's going on in my life right at that moment, whether I've talked to you about it or not. It's like God delivers you a message to give to me every single time. And that's what the church lacks. Like it, it doesn't, it's not even about that no more. It's as soon as you get in there, y'all passing around the collection plate. Like, I mean, dang, we just got here. We just sung three songs and now y'all passing the plate around. Like, are you going to say anything? Are you going to pray? Are you going to, are you going to do anything that's constructive besides collecting money? So, I mean, honestly, that's what I see. And let's talk about that. Hey, Amen. Let's talk about that. I like, I like, I like this one. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Um, because I remember first walking into a church. I didn't grow up in church. Um, I didn't have parents in church. Um, I walked in, walked in 14 years old, going on 15 and just wanted to change. I was actually invited by a friend and so many people, so many people's testimony have been that they've walked into a church and automatically got judged, automatically felt dis you know, displaced, discomfort. And it, it's so many things that's happening where it's not about God. It's about the in crowd. Because can I tell you something about this gospel industry that I'm in? It's in crowd. So somebody that said, um, said that actually on an interview where there, there, there's a whole bunch of groups. And if you're not in that group, you get pushed out and then there's big, little smaller groups and everybody making all these groups, but we're supposed to be one body of Christ. Then we forget about all the people on the outside and, and, and the competing and, and all the things instead of saying, you know what, I'm here to help you. If I, if I have the resources, I'm going to give it to you. If I, if I have the word to give to you, I'm going to give it to you. You know, these things that when people go home and all the theatrics, because, you know, the singing that just be able to calm your spirit in the situation. And then for you to be able to receive the word. But the main thing is getting the word so that when you could go home, you have the tools to be able to apply it in your life when you're going through hard situations. If you didn't get anything and you just got a whole bunch of hype, a whole bunch of hoobla and all that, it doesn't help you. And first of all, most people, are not comfortable when they go and talk about their situation. I don't know if you guys remember there was a situation where it was a lady that came and tell her testimony and she was saying she was blunt. She was from the streets and she said how she felt, you know, this is what I used to do. And then I feel God has delivered me from it, but they, sh they closed, they closed down the mic. They was like, nah, she needs to stop because of how she talked. You can't stop people because of, how they talk, how they look, because people, people are not going to look the way that you want them to be that just because that's how they started. don't mean, that's how they're going to end though. But you have to get to a point of knowing that you can't sit here and judge somebody. You judge this person today. This person might need, have what you need tomorrow. Can, can we talk about it? You talk about this person. There's so many times where you think about how many how many, and I'm going to talk about the industry and the music. There's been, there's been singers that we've had on the show that have talked about how sing, other singers have talked about they don't have the church sound. They don't have this. They don't look like this. They don't shout like this. They don't do the runs like this. Why are we so cliche when it comes to things, when it comes to worshiping God? Oh, he doesn't shout. She doesn't shout this way. Stop it. Because at the end of the day, you didn't come in with the, with the full program. And we have to be able to help each other. We all here passing through. Time on this earth, if you haven't noticed, has been going on super speed with now this COVID pandemic. People are leaving here left and right. And nothing is really needing <laughs> for you to go and judge somebody and hurt somebody. 
Because like we talked about in the holiday season, suicide is rampant. Sickness is rampant. Domestic violence is rampant. All kind of things are happening at home. Nobody needs you to add something on top of what they already got going at home. And if God has called you, can I tell you this? If God's called you to preach, to evangelize, to pray, to, to sing, to do any of those things, follow his teachings. Because if you know the right thing to do, but you do not follow it, it is a sin. That is what it says in James. It's a sin. If you know better, just simple phrase like that. If you know better, do better. There's no excuse for it. You know how it felt. You can have empathy. You can be able to change a situation. Just put the time in. There's going to be people that done you wrong. Don't become just like them. Be the difference. Be the change. Stop sitting there and trying to, to form to the in crowd because you see them judging. You see them gossiping. You see them doing all the things that obviously the Bible says not to do. But because it, it's the popular crowd, it's just like high school. You know, when people were changing the way they were so they could be an in crowd. In the church scene nowadays, that's what it seems to be. And it's in. It's all about theatrics and not about the word and not about God. It's about people's motives. And you can be able to tell by that. Like I've always told people when um, in my congregation, when I had a church, people, let's talk about this. People, there's a lot of wolf in sheep clothing. And it's funny that you'll see these wolf and sheep and sheep clothing have big following and the people that are actually trying to do something. Don't have a following that shows you right there evidence of a situation because you're not supposed to be loved by people on this earth. It says in the Bible that we're going to be hated. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be talked about because if you're doing the right thing, why would the world be able to give you your flowers for that? They don't want you to do the right thing. They want you all to be the same and not to do anything. So we have to get to go against the grain. We have to go against the current. And be different and stand on God's word and his promises and understand that we are in the people business. If you're antisocial, you can't be a pastor. I don't understand who, whoever said that, <laughs> that you could be a pastor and antisocial. I don't understand that. If you're in, I'm going to take titles off. If you proclaim to be a Christian, a follower of Christ, you can't be antisocial. Because you're going to miss out on your blessing. When you accepted salvation and said that, you know what, God, I'm going to give you my life. I believe that you, you died and rose on the third day. Forgive me for my sins because I am a sinner. When you said that and you gave your life to God, you can't now be the way you were because the old you is gone. Now you have to be able to stand on the word and have faith to be able to know that God's going to bring you through. And to help others because blessings for you ain't just for you. That's why a lot of people ain't got blessed yet. If you ever look at Job, what happened to Job? Job had his friends talk about him, lost his kids, lost his money, lost his house. Even the woman that he laid in the bed with every night told him, curse God and die. He had everybody against him. And at the end of the day, what happened? He didn't sit there and judge them for how they was. He prayed for them. He prayed for them, and after he prayed for them, God blessed him with everything he lost and more because God saw his heart. God sees your heart if you're truly doing it for people or if you're doing it for the clout. You can have all the platforms and still feel empty. You can have all the money and still feel empty because you're not doing it for God. You're doing it for you. Why do you think there's so many people going through hell and you think that they made it? And that's why social media seems so cool, because you could fake what you want people to see you as. And social media could be your mask. But at home, you're crying. At home, you're depressed. At home, you, your relationship is in shambles. At home, you have all these things that's working against you. And you're wondering why. It's because you took God out of it and you put money. You took God out of it and you put a person. You took God out of it. And you put a situation. That's what happens a lot of times. 
We take God out of situations and get mad at God. Why is things not working? Well, you took him out of it. You're outside of God's will. And then you're judging people saying, how are they blessed? How are they getting this? How are they getting that? You don't know what their prayer life looks like. You don't know what their persistence is. And, and their confidence and, and all the things in the work that they do when you're sleeping and all of the hard work that they go through that God has led them to do. God said, make the plan. Make the plan and he will order your steps. What does that mean? If you make the plan, he'll order your steps. Order every step, give you the provisions that you need. Not sitting here watching because can I tell you right now, when you're watching other people, you're lo- you're you're getting a major distraction in your life. And that major distraction is this. While they're over there building, you're over there watching instead of going over there. And sometimes God might open the door for you to go build with them, but you're too prideful. Hello, somebody. You're too prideful to say, hey, I'll, I'll join with you. Or I'll help you out. And you don't know that could have been your blessing. Between pride and judgment and gossip, those things could be the destruction of your life. You're not better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I heard somebody out there. I No, you're not better than nobody. I'm not better than nobody. Everybody has a flaw, but we have to get to a point in our life where we understand that God has us here for a reason. What is your reason? Just to sit here and be idle? Sit here and say, I let life go by and I did the best, but you didn't do anything. Think about right now. See, God's having me say this right now because it's going to be a change in somebody's life. Think about what you've done so far. And God has consistently protected you. God has persistently gave you food. God persistently has been on his job for you. But have you been on your job for God? You've got to turn up. You've got to have hot girl summer. You've got to go out with your boys. You've got to have all these situations in your life. But you have not gave God what's God. Even Jesus said, give Caesar what Caesar's, give God what's God. Yes, we got to work. Yes, we got to pay taxes. Yes, we got to do all these things. But then there's stuff that you're supposed to give to God too. But we don't, we, we give the leftovers to God. But God don't give us leftovers. We begin new jobs, man. I'm telling you, there's prayer calls across this nation. that got about 70 people probably praying for jobs, houses, level ups, marriages, cars, but they've not praying for the right thing. A new mindset, a new attitude, a pure heart. There is a time where you're going to have to change you for you to be ready for the blessings God has in store for you. And you can't do it by judging somebody else. Can I give you a, a scenario? Once you see somebody and you feel like you're about to judge somebody, because they ain't going to stop overnight. Because if you've been judging and you've been a hater for a minute, you know what I'm saying? If you've been a hater for a minute, it ain't going to stop overnight. But what you can do is start thinking this and change your mindset and start saying, God did it for them. That means He can do it for me. If you start saying that, your mind will start changing. You will start shouting. You will start be shouting for them. Like, man, God, keep doing that for them because I know he's going to do it for me. He's going to bless me in my life. He's going to bring peace in my life. You see, I'm not talking about materialistic things, a noun, a person, place, or a thing, because we love to pray for a noun all the time, a person, a place, or a thing. But no one prays for their heart to be whole again, because you've been hurt. And that's why you hurt other people. You haven't prayed for a, a restored mind so that you could be able to stop having all these negative thoughts, but you can start thinking of things of God and start thinking about what God would want for your life. There's so much ready for you. You could have been had the house. You could have been had the marriage. You could have been had the career. If you would have changed your heart and changed your mind, it's not you getting in your way. It's the things you do that's getting in the way. 
You are broken. You are going through things. You have been having a rocky past from molestation to abuse to everything that you've had in your life. But until you sit and give it to God and stop stressing about things that you can't control, things are not going to change in, in your life. God wants you to give it to him so that you can know at the end of the day that nobody could take anything that God has given to you. How many people have did it on their own will and got that job and lost that job and got that job and lost that job. But when you wait for God, God will give you a job and you'll be elevated or that man or that woman you've been waiting for. You've been sitting there. I need a relationship. I need this person. I need this. First of all, God wants you to fix you because the only common denominator in all your relationships was you. And you got to get to the point of being healed for yourself and know how to be content with yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't love nobody. God is of love. And if you don't know love for yourself, how can you know God's love? How can you love somebody if you don't love yourself? Self-destruction only brings chaos, turmoil, loneliness, bitterness, and you got to get to a point in your life. Hello, somebody. You got to get to a point in your life where you say, I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling like I'm not getting where I'm supposed to be. I'm tired of all the things I've been going through that I've brought onto myself. Cause sometimes we got to have some accountability. We get, we love judging people because we don't like being accountable. We judge people because we like, I'd rather talk about them and what they're doing compared to talking about what I'm doing because you start the movement in your life. And God is trying to wake you up. Hello. Everybody say they woke, but they the meanest, ugliest, judging, gospel, gospel, gossipiness person. But they saying they're a man and woman of God. It's a time where we need to change and start breaking these chains. These chains are holding us back from what God is really want in our life. And it's time for us to really look at in our life right now. God's God's opening the door for you to to look at your life right now and to say to yourself, God, I want to change. I know it's not going to happen overnight. I know I have some very bad, destructive, toxic ways, but God, if you can help me daily, take those ways from me and bring a change in my life. God, I will give you a praise and a worship that is beyond measure. God, I will give you my all. I will give you my family. I will give you my house. I will give you my situation. All the things I hold near, I will give to you because I know that you're the only one that can truly change my situation. If you could say that tonight and give yourself to God so that he could clean you up from the inside out, your life will start to change. But you can't get a change until you're ready for a change. You can't force somebody to change if they're not ready to change. People got to be tired of being tired of being tired of the same situation. The devil will put you in the same situation over and over again if you let him. You'll go from relationship to relationship to relationship and it'll get worse and worse and worse. You'll, you'll have jobs that will go down and it'll go down and will go down and they won't even respect you being as a scholar. You can have four degrees, but because of you not putting God in the place, you'll keep putting yourself in self-destructive ways and you'll stop caring. Can I tell y'all something tonight? The main thing that's going to help you is to start caring again. I heard you out there. The person that said, I, I stopped caring because people didn't care for me. Can I tell you something? I said the same thing. And it caused a life of destruction. It caused a whole lot of issues. It caused me not to have empathy. How can you pray for somebody if you can't care for somebody? How can you help somebody if you don't care even for yourself? It's time to get to helping 
people again, caring for people again. All this social media stuff ain't real. Once you get off social media, you get you go back to your real life. In your real life, which you've been neglecting because we've spent so much time trying to appease other people or being in other people's business, is in destruction. It's 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 missing out. It needs some attention. It's like a rose that ain't haven't haven't had water or even fertilize in a minute. It's time to get back to you. Get back. Maybe if you need to fast, I'm telling you right now, go ahead and fast. If it needs, if you need to do something, get away for a while and get back to you and God. God already had us go through a quarantine in 2020 for us to get a wake up call so that we could start realizing who's really in control. Some of us have got COVID and God was telling you to slow down and talk to him. I want you to write now. Life is not promised to nobody. We could get off this life tonight and not make it tomorrow. But I want you to know God always gives you a way of escape. He always gives you a way to be able to change from whatever you've been going through, whatever you've been dealing with. You ain't got to judge people no more. We know you hurt. As soon as somebody judge somebody, they might not know it. But the true people that's been healed will sit there and be like, he hurt. She hurt. The people that cuss you out and and be all rah, 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 you hurt. It's okay. I've been there before. But you can't stay there. Like Medea said, you could go through depression and all that stuff, and you could process that, but you can't live there. You got to move on and keep living because God has blessed you with too much time and too much life for you to waste it. And not be able to sit and look at what God has blessed you with so far and smell the roses and thank God for what he has done in your life. Amen. Amen. One thing I want you to know, God loves you. I love you. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, that is not the end of your story. You still can make it through. You still can heal from where you've been. That's not you no more. God God healed you from that. But you got to believe it. Right now, you're walking around with crutches, but you have the ability to walk. Right now, you, 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 you're acting like you're blind, but you can see. Wake up, y'all. Stop judging. Stop hurting people with your words. And start healing yourself. Because if you could heal yourself, you could go anywhere in life. Nothing can stop you. We all the way up because God will heal you and elevate you because he knows that you are willing and able to listen to him, to have a relationship with him, because that's where our help comes from. If you didn't know, now you know your help comes from the Lord. And you just have to have that relationship with him. Not me. I can't force you to do it. Boss Barbie can't force you to do it. You got to do it. Start making time for God, just like we do with our diets. You know, when you start dieting, you start, you know, meal prepping and all that. Okay, same thing with God. Take 15 minutes and talk to God. Take 15 minutes and start start reading your word. If you fall asleep, try again. It's just like running. You might fall asleep after five minutes. You might fall asleep after 10 minutes. But after a while, you'll start getting it. You'll start hearing the word. You'll start seeing things different. you start looking at things. And when you pray to God, you'll start seeing him show up in your life. And you'll start getting excited. But can I tell you something right there? Because I I, I don't want to leave you there because people get excited. And, you know, when you start getting excited and fired up for God, you forget one thing. That's when the devil gets mad and all kind of things are going to come up in your life. But they can't affect you. The only person that can let that affect you is you. And if you truly start building with those tools of reading your word and praying and letting things go by that you cannot control. You have the formula of success. Amen. Amen, Boss Barbie. Amen. You just stay in my business, though. Like. <laughs> I'll be trying to. Amen. So with that being said, I want everybody to know, make sure justice for Joshua. Um, shout out to his mom, AJ Moorhead, that's on here. Um, 
Shout outs to everybody that's tuning in. Make sure you share, like, subscribe. It is about that time. See, I see God be having us have these impromptu interviews because we had somebody that was supposed to come on, but they weren't able to make it. Um, shout out to her. But when God wants a word to go forth, we definitely got to be obedient for it. So with that being said, I want y'all to know this. And I'm and and I I want y'all really to know this for real for real. Um, go follow us on podcast because I'm tired of us being at the bottom. Okay, I'm this is me, Pastor Jay, asking you everybody that's listening to go on to the podcast where you can find us at Anchor.fm, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all podcast platforms. Oh, iHeartMedia, iHeartMedia, Radio.co, not title yet, but it's coming. Make sure you share, like, be able to give a rating, five stars, share this live, share us on YouTube, follow us so that you know when the next interview is coming on or the next show is coming on. If you're an artist, gospel artist, make sure that you go on to anointedradionetwork.com, click the link for music uh, submissions, and we'll be re- our team will review that. And make sure you download the Anointed Radio app on Apple or Android. Either one, you could be able to get it and listen to 24 hour uninterrupted gospel on Anointed Radio, Las Vegas's number one gospel show network. All that good jazz. And I want y'all to know the Grammys is coming to Vegas. Grammys coming to Vegas. We the in Grammys there. is coming to Vegas. Vegas is coming up. We are coming up in the world. We have football teams. We have uh, Pro Bowl. We have the draft. We have all these things. We just got to stay healthy, y'all. Make sure y'all stay healthy. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Uh, get tested. I know it's hard to get tested. If you didn't know, you can go on, I think, COVID test. Uh, GOV. I know it's been hard to get a test, but you can get a test sent to your house for the F. That means for free. So with that being said, make sure you stay healthy, stay encouraged, stay prayed up. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but we could do it together if we all just stay kind to one another. So with that being said, I love y'all. Stay tuned. Follow us on social media at LV Anointed Radio on all social media platforms. And stay up and, 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 and come in the comments. You know what I'm saying? You know, DM us or something. And, you know, talk about a topic you might want to talk about. You know, or something. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's the end of the show. So, with that being said, I love y'all. See y'all next week. And we'll talk to y'all next week. Make sure you tell your friend about Noita Radio because we're here for you and your friends and your family too. Bye, y'all.